Welcome to My Long Island TV. From Manhasset to Montauk, we have traveled our communities to bring you the following events. I'm your host, Waldo Cabrera. My Long Island TV starts now. Here at Brookhaven, my primary responsibility is to make sure that the remarkable fundamental research that takes place in the laboratory has impact on uh, both the people of Long Island, the country, and the nation, hence global and regional solutions. Uh, one of the primary domains we do that in is in energy. Brookhaven was one of the first places to construct a civilian nuclear reactor. We work on safety, we work on alternative fuel cycles, and we're beginning to look at uh, a program we began many years ago uh, in small reactors, which is believed to be a new approach forward. We have a history of concerns about nuclear, which is one of the logical ones, but this is an island and there are critical safety issues that in fact are important with that. And so, uh, but I think on Long Island, I think that there are four ways that we're going to see uh, energy move forward, at least in terms of the sources of energy. Uh, the first is there's going to be some photovoltaics here, no question about it. Uh, LIPA is developing offshore wind, so those are the two big renewables. What sort of biomass resource uh, do we have on the island? Everything from waste, trash, and things like that to the uh, clippings that come out of the vineyards. We're probably going to be using natural gas for a long time on Long Island for an energy source. The problem is that it is a fossil fuel. It's much cleaner than coal. But if we're going to use natural gas, we're going to have to figure out how to capture the carbon dioxide that's a result and put it someplace. And I think one of the big questions that Long Island's going to have to face is where to put it. And we're uh, about to host a 200-acre photovoltaic array that will produce 32 megawatts of electricity for LIPA here on Long Island. This not only provides electricity, but it will be a way that we can understand how photovoltaics can be integrated into the electric grid. This is part of the challenge that LIPA has. It's true with windmills as well. The wind doesn't blow all the time either. So. Um, uh, I think it's not only going to produce electricity, but it's going to produce important knowledge that will help uh, both, both LIPA and the utilities in the Northeast in particular understand how photovoltaics can be part of, the, part of the future. When I began studying carbon dioxide, there was 20 percent less carbon dioxide in the Earth's atmosphere than there is now. Uh, this is one of the most serious problems that I think humanity faces. It's, uh, in terms of impacts, it's kind of the death of a thousand cuts. Uh, that things happen here and things happen there that seem to be unconnected, but the frequency changes and it creates real issues for us. I gave a talk about this at Rutgers four years ago and said, we pretty much knew then that human beings are affecting the Earth's climate. Um, we're not only affecting the Earth's climate, we're affecting the chemistry of the ocean with carbon dioxide. And it's time to figure out what we're going to do. I went back and gave a talk three months ago and said, well, the only thing that we've done in the last four years is make it harder. We're at a critical time um, where we need to uh, set an agenda for technologies that need to be deployed on a large scale, which haven't really even been demonstrated now. Carbon dioxide capture and storage is done on a limited basis around the world. It has to be massively deployed. We really, uh, perhaps not, certainly not for Long Island, but for certain places, nuclear is going to make a tremendous amount of sense. We're going to have to figure out what fuel cycle. Is it uranium? Is it thorium? I think if we can address those kinds of issues, I think we have an opportunity of addressing this problem.